Welcome to this pan following tutorial part 2. In this tutorial we're going to build this effect. The little groundhog layer is following the car layer around the screen. One of the first things we need to do is figure out what the dimensions of the, the layers involved are. In this case we have a uh, the car layer which is layer B, or layer A, which is uh, has a zoom of 35%. The groundhog layer, or layer B, has a zoom of 25%. So their half widths are 17.5 and 12.5 respectively. And to align them next to each other requires a distance from their centers of 30. Now let's deal with the heights. The height of the center layer, which is layer A, is 41.21 and the groundhog, which is layer B, is for, at the height of it is 29.44 with the given half width shown. When you calculate the distance between the two centers, it's 35.32 with the uh, round off. Now let's start building our pan following example. We're going to start out with layer A as a 35% zoomed image and layer B is a 25 has a 25 percent zoom. First thing we'll do is we'll align the center of layer B to layer A. So let's get the ma uh, my, uh, modifier in there to follow the pan X of layer 1 and to follow the pan X uh, excuse me pan Y of layer 1. That's our pan following. Now the subordinate layer center is aligned with this uh, master layer center. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the offsets for layer B relative to layer A. So let's add those now. We'll leave uh, layer one or uh, keyframe one alone. We'll set this to zero for keyframe two and we're going to move down 35.32. These values were gotten uh, in the early part of the uh, tutorial, so just bear with me. Now we'll do 30. From here on it's just copying, basically. All we're doing is going around the uh, layer A. And the last one is zero. So now what we have done is created our movement around the outside edge of layer A. Now Let's do our movement for layer A. The half width of layer A is 17 and a half. So 50 minus 17 and a half is 32.5. The half width, a uh, half height of layer A is 20.61. So 50 or minus 50 plus 20.61 is 29.39. So minus 29.39. Let's copy that the first keyframe. frame. Let's make this a negative. Let's add a keyframe. Let's put this as a positive. And now we have the first cut at our and following. Now let's make a few tweaks. Notice that as we approach keyframe 3 here, the bottom of the layer B image goes off screen. Let's adjust that so that it just barely touches the screen. Let's try this before, it, so it doesn't even go off the screen, it just touches the bottom there. There we go. Now as we approach keyframe 6, notice that layer B is also going off the screen, so we need to move it 
over to the right so that layer A is a little higher by the time the bottom of uh, layer B gets to the bottom of the screen. That works. Okay, cool. Now let's make another tweak. Notice that as layer B's bottom edge reaches the bottom edge of layer A, that we're not at the very end of the keyframe. The layer A's corner, upper right corner, is not the same as the screen corner. So that can be summarized by the difference in the heights of the two layers. So um, since the half height of layer A is 20.61 and the half height of layer B is 14.72, the difference between those two is 5.39. So if we just layer B down by 5.39, we should reach the bottom, the bottom edge of layer B should reach the bottom edge of layer A at the same time that layer A's upper right corner reaches the screen's upper right corner. Let's see if that happens. Works for me. Since the beginning doesn't start the same, and we want it to be the start of the same, let's come over here and adjust this down 5.39. So now, as soon as layer A starts moving, layer B starts to appear. Cool. Okay, now, let's make some adjustments to the movement of layer A. Let's add two keyframes. Okay, well, what the heck, let's make it minus 25 and let's make this zero. And then let's make it stationary for a little while. Let's see what happens. Looks like it works pretty good. And that is the whole movement. Layer A is moving across the screen, stopping for a little bit, and layer B is still moving around layer A. And we didn't have to do very many calculations at all other than the, the width and the height and the like, but we didn't have to make any changes to the uh, movement just because we changed something about layer A. We didn't have to make any complicated changes. And that concludes the demo or this, uh, this pen following example. Welcome to this synopsis conclusion summary of the pan following tutorial. A pan following requires at least two layers, a subordinate layer and a master layer. This is the master layer provides the information for position that's used by the subordinate layer to adjust its own position. They're not linked layers, they're just associated with each other. The pan following modifier obtains information to the uh, current layer and that is then used to modify its own positioning. Now, if you provide that positioning information with absolutely no offset value, the subordinate layer is going to be aligned, the, the center of the subordinate layer is going to be aligned with the master layer's center. And if you do provide an offset value, then it's just a positioning that is subor uh, relative to the master layer's center position. And you can apply the positioning information using one or more of the following. A keyframe pan setting, which you can adjust manually, or you can drag the layer around and it'll adjust the uh, uh, positioning information within the pan settings uh, as appropriate. You can also use an action that's constant or an action that is a function. Any of those three or all three of them together can provide you with your positioning information. If you manually adjust your layer around, that's, that can provide you with approximate offsetting information. Or you can use math to create the uh, exact placement of the layer where you want it. If you use precise measurements, you're going to need to know information about all the layers, heights, and widths as necessary, but you don't require them if you don't want to use them. It just helps sometimes. Just remember that the offset distance from the master the offset distance is relative to the master layer's center. The precise measurements provide you the ability to place it exactly where you want. The approximate 
easy to do. Just push, position it, and if it's not necessary to be uh, precise, just move it around as, a, as necessary. You can guess and tweak as required. Now, if you make changes to the position of the master layer, the subordinate layer is going to move automatically. If you need to, you can adjust the subordinate layer's position um, accordingly. Um, you know, if you move the, the uh, master layer into position where the, uh, for instance, where the uh, subordinate layer can't be seen, easy to make a change. It's just when you make the change, you're making a change relative to the master layer center. Now, modifiers make that positioning information a lot easier to accomplish than if you had to do it manually. If you were to uh, not use modifiers and just position one, inf one layer relative to the other, you're probably going to end up having many more keyframes, and you're probably also going to have to use a lot more or uh, involved calculations to figure out where one layer is relative to the other to do it right. When you apply a pan following modifier, you can apply it to all keyframes or to a single keyframe. If it's applied to a single keyframe, then it's valid only to the right of the keyframe and to the left of the next keyframe. And that concludes this summary synopsis conclusion of for pan following part three. Thanks for watching.